All right, we have some special um, polynomials that are that are called perfect squares. Perfect squares are when we have two terms and we have a minus sign in between them. So, for example, x squared minus 49. This is the, um, it's differences of perfect squares. When we talk about what is the difference, remember difference means minus, right? So when we have two terms that have a minus sign in between it, we need to look and see is, is it a perfect square? And all that a perfect square means is you should say, whoop, whoop, this is an easy one. Let me do this one. Because when I go to split this up, first off, you notice there's no middle term. There's no X term, right? Just a plain X. How does x squared split up evenly x and x now 49 what two numbers multiply together to give you 49 the same number 7 and 7 right so what a perfect square is when you see something like this and no middle term you're going to have plus 7 and minus 7 the reason why this happens is when we multiply this together and I have x plus 7 and x minus 7. Well, x times x is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. x times 7 is positive 7x. 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. Remember, you add these two together. What happens to these two numbers? They cancel out and make 0, right? So that's why the only thing we're left with is x squared minus 49. Here's the deal. Slide and divide still works with this stuff, but if you look at it and see that it's a difference of squares, it should be easy to factor. Here's what I mean. Ready? Let's look at these. So we can write these down. We have x squared minus 9. I see that there are two terms. So if I split it up, x squared splits up as x and x. Now, hopefully we know what two numbers, multi what, what same number multiplies together to give you 9. It is 3, but listen, here's, if you don't know, here's what we do in the calculator. Ready? You're going to press 2nd and the x squared button. Okay, that's going to give you on your calculator the square root sign. Then type in 9. Press enter. Did it give you three? Right now, you better have that calculator and know those buttons. And if you don't know, ask your neighbor. So now we are going to put plus three and minus three. Do the next one the same way. Next one. So if we go through here, and I, <clears throat> goodness, all right. I see I can split it up. It's, I'm going to try and see if I can, really. And I look, and I know that D splits up as D and D. Now, what's the square root of 121? Does it end up being an even number? What, I'm sorry, what did you find it to be? 11. So you're going to have plus 11 and minus 11. Not bad, huh? Try the next two. Well, wait, what did the next two do to me? Actually, instead of just an x squared or whatever in front, they put a number, right? So let's see if we can do this, if this works out evenly. What did we find the square root of 9 was? 3. Find out right now, what's the square root of 144? And if you know it, what number times itself gives you 144? Or do the square root. It's 12. Once you find that out, now 9h squared is 3h and 3h. Right? Plus and minus. We found the square root of 144. And that's 12 and 12. Try 6. Oh. What did you find the square root of 25 to be? 5. What about the square root of 64? 
eight. So let's split this bad boy up. I have 5K and 5K, plus and minus. And then we found the square root of 64 to be eight. So what do I need to add with the eight, though? A J, because you have J squared. So 8J and 8J. That only works when these, because see, look, in the parentheses, they have to be exactly the same. But one is positive, one is negative. All right. Here's one right here. It's, I think we might have actually done this the other day, but let's see how we do. It's what? It's on the homework? Okay. The area of the rectangular garden is right here. A squared minus 10A plus 24. Find the length and the width. Okay. So finding the length and the width means to find the factors. So let's start with slide and divide. Step one was GCF. Guys, if there's not a number besides one on like that A squared, on one of those, there's no GCF to pull out. Second thing is to slide. You have to have a number like 5A squared, 6A squared. Is there a number in front of A? Uh -uh. So we go straight to just factoring. So I'm going to split up my parentheses right here. A squared splits up as A and A, right? You need the factors of 24. All right. Whoop, I didn't mean to put that line right there. 24. So remember, go to Y equals right now. Go to Y1, guys. Put 24 divided by X. Okay? Let me pull out my calculator. Okay, I'm telling y'all to go in there and put 24 divided by X. What I am doing by pressing second graph, these are the factors. What does factors mean? These are the numbers that multiply together to give you 24. So instead of you going and thinking in your brain, hmm, what, you know, like I did when I was old, you know, in the Stone Ages when we wrote on rocks. Okay, that's again a joke. Okay, here we go. Anyway, um, instead of trying to write them all out and listing them, I'm like, okay, look, they're all right here. Now I want to add them together. What do they need to add together to be? The middle term, not 10, but, but negative 10. Here's what I'm saying, because remember, it's got to be the sign of that right there, so negative 10. Now, and I think that's really what you were telling me anyway. When I add these together, which ones give me, I look right here in the positives, and I see that 6 plus 4 gives me 10. But I need it to be negative 10, right? So it's just be, it just becomes negative 6 and negative 4. Because a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So now I have A minus 6, A minus 4. Remember, you can always check it. Put the original problem into Y1, what your factors are into Y2, and make sure. When you're labeling your length and the width, guys, please remember it doesn't matter. You can put A minus 6 here or A minus 4. I don't care which. Okay? It doesn't matter which one's length and width. But now it asks us for the perimeter. Remember, perimeter means to add up all the sides. So let me label it. A minus 6, A minus 4. What if I tried to tell you it was 2A minus 10? Why is that not right? I haven't done all the sides, have I? I'm missing some of the sides. I'm missing A minus 6 and A minus 4. You remember, you have to do all of them. But if it's a multiple choice test, guess what, choice, what, guess what they're going to have there? They're going to have that as a choice because you're going to go too fast. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 A's. Minus 20 is my perimeter. All right, try this one. Do this one right now, and then I'll come back and see how we do. All right, they want the length and the width, which means I need to find the factors. Now, what kind of shape is this? It says a square. What's true about all the sides of a square? Aren't they the same? Right? So my length and my width have to be the same. That gives me a hint to what I'm looking for. 
I told y'all there's no number in front of that um, n squared, right? So that means I'm going to split it up evenly. So I've got n and n. I need the factors of 64. What do they need to equal? Negative 16. Now, I told you, though, if you think about it, they have to be the same because it's a square, right? So I need the same number that gives me 64 when you multiply it together. When they want the same number, guys, you take the square root. That's the easy way to do it. Or you can look in your factors. You should have gotten negative 8 and negative 8. It, the square root right here would have given me positive 8, but you know it's got to be a negative, so you change it to negative 8. So minus 8. Minus 8. So my length is n minus 8. How can I write this? Let's just review this. How can I write this if I only use one parenthesis? Remember, n minus 8 squared. That's what that means. n minus 8, the quantity squared, means this. All right, let's try one more. Oh, yeah, fun times. Okay. Draw this down on your paper. Let's talk about this because you're definitely seeing this on your quiz and on your test. All right. When you have this box and you're looking, and we're trying to fill in the, the missing information, look right here. It says x squared. x times what gives me x squared? x. Okay. So now, this missing box in here, x times 7, 7x. Seven I'm missing these two pieces. To get this outside one, I have to take 7 times what to give me negative 35? Think about negative 5. Then x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Now, remember, guys, what's on the outside is my factors. Another name for factors are dimensions. That is length and width. This is not the first time I've said that. And remember, the EOC just used different terms all the time. So now my factors are x minus 5 times x plus 7. My product is what's inside. That's also called my area. So now I have x squared plus 2x minus 35. That's all it's asking me for. I promise you see it again. Oh, here it is again. Okay. I'm psychic. All right. 7x squared is 7x times what gives me 7x squared? Just an x. So now, 7x times 1, 7x. 1 times what gives me negative 10? Negative 10. x times negative 10, negative 10x. Remember, guys, factors are around the outside. So I have x plus 1 and 7x minus 10. Those are my factors. My product's what's happening inside here. 7x squared. Don't forget to add these bad boys right here. Negative 3x minus 10. Okie dokie, Smokey. Here we go.